All right, I have an awesome home bait tank set up to show you guys. But first, before I show it to you, I'm going to show you my not so awesome home bait tank set up. Which is right here. Now I'm going to jump right into it. I don't have a big enough drainage system. That is one of the problems with my own setup. The uni seals that were at my local hydroponics store were all one size. They didn't have anything bigger than three quarter inch uni seals. These uni seals allow PVC pipe to go into a curved surface. So they work really well when you have curved surfaces. So I've got one, two, three, four uni seals in this system. Five, actually five. This is a flat surface. I really didn't need to have a uni seal on it, but I used one anyway. And I ended up with extras. And as you can see with the pipes going everywhere, this is a convoluted mess. Now I will show you where each thing goes here. First, I have a pump. That's, uh, I think, one inch PVC that I've cut holes in to help prevent anything big from going through it. Minnows could still go through it, and I do have a lot of minnows in the system. It goes through this pipe to the bottom of this barrel, all the way to the bottom. And inside this barrel, I have filtration media. And it's just easy filtration media. Just cut up plastic pipe. I did have like a mini bucket on the inside connected to the exits as kind of a polisher filter, but I got rid of it because it, it really didn't work that well. These kept getting stopped up. The pipes that allow water to go from the barrel into the tank. I did get a lockable lid on this to try to help with the mosquito problems but as you can see there are mosquitoes in here well you probably can't actually see them but they are getting in through this tank into here and then they're not really able to go anywhere they end up into here feeding the minnows now this tank is just for storage it pulls water from the gutters on the garage I have a little bit of cloth on here to keep the gunk out of it and more cloth right here. It goes into here and when it gets up to this pipe's height, then it, you know, drains into the filter for the whole system to use. We actually have two of these big totes and they're both used to water the garden and this one obviously is used for my bait tank to put excess water into it. Now as you can see the water has uh, kind of stopped coming out of this one. The first drain is this lower one and it goes into a light. That's a UV light to help kill algae off. So it goes through there and helps keep the water kind of clean. Although I do have this secondary one here for when it gets up to right here and then it exits without impeding, in being impeded, without being filtered into the tank. The only filtration this gets is the, you know, those filter pieces that I put into that tank. It is keeping it somewhat clear. It's not too bad. Then I have the third one, which is the overflow. And this overflow just goes into a pipe that goes into the ground that goes into the drainage. And this is into it as well. So this is drainage. For this if this gets too high and then this is drainage for this if it gets too high now we got water flowing in this again you can see i could actually adjust this if i wanted to i could push it down and make it like pull more water out if i wanted to but yeah this is a 140 gallon tank that you can get at rural king but i found it online for like 50 bucks and then this was a 20 dollar 55 gallon tank so I'm filtering about 140 gallons with about 55 gallons. 
it is a little bit overkill, but I bet you I could keep thread fins in here or gizzard shad, which I may try someday. I may actually have a couple of thread fins in here. I got a ton of minnows. Anytime I have minnows or shiners left over, I just drop them into the tank here. And they feed the couple of bluegill that are in here, which I need to get more bluegill, and one bullhead catfish, which is right there. Maybe I can catch them real quick. Mr. Bullhead. And as you can see, I got these pipes in here for them to hide in. I definitely need to get more bait to put in this tank. I'm using this board to help cover it a little bit to help with evaporation and heat. I don't want this to get like super, super hot. And it is cool to the touch. We've been having 95 degree weather and this water is staying cool, even with it in direct sunlight, which is a good thing. I'm guessing it's because all the extra air that's getting in here through this one and that's bubbling the water as well. Even with it being a convoluted mess, it seems to be working out really good. Now just a quick overview before I show you my buddy's awesome setup. Water comes in here, it overflows into here, gets filtered, comes out in two different places, goes in at one place and has a drain. And the big one has a drain as well and the water is being filtered not only mechanically by all the plastic pieces in the 55 gallon drum but also with the UV light to kill the algae off. And I'm using pretty much uni seals in the vast majority of this system. Now let's show you an awesome setup. And here is my buddy Flathead Joe's home bait tank. Really cool enclosed room that has an air conditioner and then a controller for a pump for the water pump. Water pump is inside pumps up and all it goes through is a five gallon bucket that has a couple of uh, aquarium filters and some lava rock in it. It's a lot less complicated than what I have going on. Let's stay up. Yep. There's the intake and he's got an aerator strapped to it to put bubbles in there. And you can see there's gizzard chad all through his system. He says it keeps the water about 70 degrees during the summertime, keeping the gizzard chad good. He likes to catch striped bass. And this is what he uses to catch it with. He keeps a whole bucket of water in here too, so he can transfer this water into his bait tanks on his boats to not shock the gizzard shad when he pulls them out of the tank. And plenty of salt. You need a little bit of salt to keep the bait calm, and it also helps with the uh, slime coat, at least for gizzard shad. I don't have salt in my tank because I don't have any gizzard shad or thread fins in it at the moment. He's even tried to keep skipjacks in here before and they last a few days, but they don't, they don't last too terribly long. So maybe a good overnight tank for skipjacks, but not really that good. He also has a recirculation pump. I guess that's what that's called. In saltwater aquariums, you put that in to give flow. So all it is, it's just pushing water to help with the flow of the tank. Now we had the filter apart when he was showing me what was in it. So the tank is a little bit dirty from us messing around with it. Uh, the tank itself, I'm not going to pull it out, but like right below here, some holes 
just in case it overflows, so it will overflow into here if the the uh, the filters get clogged up. And he takes them out every now and then and washes them off, but he leaves the lava rock in there pretty much permanently. And there's the aerator. And that big pump he got from one of our local aquarium stores. Uh, Aquatic Marine. I've been there before myself and bought stuff. It's a really nice local store. But yeah, this is the ultimate home bait tank system. I really want to do this someday or something similar to this. Let me know in the comments below what do you think about his system. I think it's really awesome.